My name is Alex Wallace and I'm the founder of the Mintridge Foundation, a registered charity dedicated to supporting young people through sporting role models to help their physical and their mental well-being. In the summer of 2019, uh, I probably had one of the most turbulent summers that I've ever experienced. Um, I was, for the majority of the summer, getting very excited about getting married, um, and that was the 31st of August. Um, but the week before that, um, I lost one of my best friends to suicide. Um, so looking back now, I just think I just had this concoction of the, the highest of highs and the lowest of lows that summer. 2019, in, prof in the professional um, circumstances, was really exciting. Um, as a charity, we'd been going for just over a year, and we were really building momentum. Um, and we were getting out into new places. The, the name of the charity was um, really spreading. Uh, awareness was growing, um, and we were just really impacting so many more young people. So it was at a really exciting time. Um, we felt confident with what we were doing, um, and this was this was just one of the, the most exciting times of the charity, really. From, from 2019 to 2020, we had some really important milestones, both professionally and personally. Um, professionally, we were really looking at stepping it up a gear um, with uh, our backroom staff at the charity, reaching new schools, um, taking on a whole new role within our fundraising, uh, which included mass participation events, uh, charity balls, so many different elements that relied heavily on, on lots of people in one place. Um, and personally as well, just we were really looking to enjoy the first year of marriage um, with a honeymoon in the autumn, um, followed by uh, moving house and so many other plans. So 2019 was up and down, but the majority of it was, was great. <laughs> I don't remember the 23rd of March exactly, but I do remember the 13th of March. And the 13th of March was my 29th birthday, and I was heading down to Wells for a school programme. Um, and as I was leaving the office that day to travel down to Somerset, uh, I had the radio on, and I remember Sarah Cox saying, we're not mentioning the C word, we're not talking about it. Um, it was just building, there was this huge momentum building, and I was really scared by this point, scared of the unknown, scared um, particularly for my grandparents, um, and just thinking, what is this weird and wonderful time that we're living in? Um, and then the next day in the school, it was the first time we'd had hand sanitizers. It was just checking that everyone was okay. And coming back from there, everyone cancelling the next day because they weren't sure if they wanted to go to a pub or not. They weren't sure what the safety precautions were, what was right, what was wrong. And then falling into the next couple of weeks, I think it was a bit of a blur as, as we gradually fell into this lockdown. And... <laughs> The excitement of those first group group WhatsApp calls, group Zoom calls, um, and that that buzz of this weird time in history that we were were experiencing. <laughs> I have a really mixed emotion about about the time we were told to go into lockdown. I knew that my families were safe because my grandparents, my in-laws were shielding, so I knew that was fine. And actually. I think it was a weird way of someone telling us that, as humanity, we need to slow down. And I, I am so guilty of rushing here, there and everywhere. So I had this sense of, wow, I have to stay at home. I, have, I, I can't go anywhere. I can't have FOMO. I can't, can't be rushing around. And actually, it was a sense of, wow, I, I can breathe and... I can enjoy everything that I, I love that I never have time for. So it was a really bizarre time. And I think I was very fortunate because I was so far removed from anyone that was suffering from COVID that I was just really enjoying um, spending quality time with my husband um, and, and exercising things that I would usually not have time for or it was rushed. and. I really embraced that first week and it was quite novel and I was actually catching up with friends and having proper catch-ups with them that I don't think I had done for years. In order to, to cope during uh, the initial lockdown, I tried to keep quite a structured day um, 
and I was carrying on working. I, I um, unfortunately had to furlough the rest of the team. Um, and in doing that, I would wake up and I would do some form of exercise in the morning. I would have that separation before sitting at my desk in, in, the, um, in the kitchen. I would ensure that I would work for a couple of hours and then I would do something at lunchtime, whether that was just a five minute yoga session, whatever it was, I was just instilling that into my day. Um, and then the afternoon, again, sitting at my desk, breaking it up, trying new things, learning new things. Um, I created a podcast series called Positivity, which I've never done anything like that before, but meeting people outside of my normal network and sport, and it was really, again, it was a, a really conflicting time because I was enjoying all these new things and these settling things that made me very content and, and relaxed, and I hadn't really experienced that for a long, a long time, um, which, yeah, it was quite a unique perspective compared to others. Um, and again, it was that sense of, I felt guilty that I was actually feeling like this. So uh, I was constantly looking at um, supporting others and how we could do that, which we were doing through the charity, which obviously had to be, had to be virtual. But in the charity work, I was working alongside athletes um, who had just been told Tokyo had been postponed. I was working alongside students who were told their GCSEs weren't happening. So actually, it gave me that perspective of I'm surrounded by people that have had these abrupt endings to their, to their careers or to their school careers, and look at how they're coping. An England netballer is coping in exactly the same way as a 16-year-old doing their GCSEs. We're all in this situation, and actually... I felt this sense of weird, wonderful virtual community that look at how they're doing it, look at the resilience they're doing, look at these canoeists that are training in their houses when they don't have any water around. Well, if they can do it, I absolutely can too. <laughs> the personality traits that I have, um, that I drew upon in that, that first lockdown to keep going was very much the social aspect of me. Um, and it was touching base with friends, organising calls, which if I'm honest, then was a struggle towards the end because of virtual fatigue. But it was very much checking in with family and friends and enjoying that quality time with them that I think it would have been a very lonely place without. And I think people have appreciated that time. Um, and from a professional point of view, I don't know how many times I had ups and downs and cried to my parents on the phone about what should I be doing, um, how, we, how are we going to survive the pandemic? Uh, and actually, every time it was just, right, Alex, let's have this perspective. Let's take a step back. This is your passion. This is what you love doing. And these young people need your help. And that's what got me out of bed in the morning for another day, exactly the same environment. So I really pulled upon my why. What, why am I doing this? Why, why am I not just putting myself on furlough and enjoying and trying a new challenge or um, just enjoying time for me? And it was because I have that purpose. Um, so that, that was very important. Uh, and spending so much time with athletes um, as well, even virtually, hearing their mindset, hearing their resilience, I think definitely I, I pulled on that within myself as well. So surrounding yourself, no matter whether it's in person or virtually, is so important in life and beyond. Complications in the last 18 months was the sense of looking after myself, uh, my husband, um, as well as looking after those within the charity, whether that's the employees of the charity that are on furlough, it was that sense of, yes, they're not working, but they, I still have that responsibility. I still want to be able to care for them. Um, and I think I really struggled at times with knowing, knowing uh, what, what was right and what was wrong. Uh, and how much um, how much of my energy should be invested in which places. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm very lucky that um, 
my immediate family has been untouched by COVID. Um, and it was, it was the balance of that guilt that I kept feeling of, I'm actually secretly enjoying parts of lockdown. Um, and because of where I live, I'm in a very rural community. I felt very far removed from it. And I felt that watching the news that really triggered um, things inside me and for my mental health, I stopped watching the daily reports. I stopped doing that side of things because I just had to invest in those around me. So yeah, I'm very lucky that I didn't, didn't have to experience anything due to COVID. Um, and lucky that my wedding was just before and lots of my friends were going through that um, of having to postpone and postpone and postpone. <laughs> um, and I did, again, it was that guilt of I just got in there before and I, I just wanted to let everyone know that I wanted to support them in the ways that I could um, in my little, little bubble in, in Northamptonshire. <laughs> in the last 18 months, the challenges that I've faced um, have have been the ups and downs of, of the announcements with COVID. Uh, I felt that we would really be getting somewhere, we'd be building up a virtual world with, uh, with the charity, and then a new role would come in. Um, we think we could do something four months down the line, and then a new role would come in. So it's that constantly changing, constantly navigating, uh, this weird and wonderful set of um, social distancing rules that meant planning was very difficult for a charity, but it wasn't just the beneficiaries, it was, you know, it was people's lives, it was employees that I didn't know how, um, how I could support them, I didn't know what support systems were going to be in place, and it was that I, I took the responsibility quite hard and I and I was struggling to remove myself from those those key decisions and I need to do that more and it really affected me. Um, I can't tell you the amount of times I've cried of just the unknown and, and that's just me at a very small charity and I think again it was that guilt, well why am I feeling like this? Think about um, CEOs of huge organisations and think of all of the people directly impacted from COVID. I haven't, I'm lucky I haven't had that. Um, and it then really triggered a point that COVID has just affected everyone in so many different ways and so many ways that I'll never understand. And, and it's just trying to understand those. Um, yeah, so very odd, very odd 18 months. <laughs> the things I've learned about myself in the last 18 months are I don't need to be rushing around here, there and everywhere. Um, I'm actually at my happiest when I am relaxed and enjoying the house and the home that I'm building with my husband and spending quality time with him and my wonderful cock spaniels. Um, the sense of joy that dogs bring uh, has, has really been a revelation for so many in lockdown. Um, and I really want to take that forward and not fall back into the old me of, I need to go and see my friends here, I need to go to this meeting. Um, actually, so much more can be achieved um, if, if you take a step back. And I think before lockdown, as a society, it was, if you're busy and exhausted, you're working really hard and you're really successful. No, no, you're not. It's, um, I need to practice what I preach more. We always talk about well-being and that being at the forefront and having those se separations. Um, and I need to need to take that forward because I've learned that that is absolutely when I'm at my happiest. And it hasn't really helped because so many of my closest friends have, have got married this year um, from cancellations and so on. But I have been rushing around again. But what I'm able to do is now I can learn from how happy and settled I was during uh, during lockdown and during those um, times when we couldn't be travelling um, against the, the sense of I haven't even had a chance to breathe and read the books that I was enjoying and go for those long runs without the apps on, without thinking I need to be here, there and everywhere, just taking that time and having that time to, to compare. I don't think I'm a different person from 18 months ago. Um, I just think I'm more self-aware. Um, I'm more aware of 
what is important and looking after myself and those immediately around me is the most important um, and if I can't do that I can't go on to do everything else and support others so it's definitely that self-awareness of of don't fill that stress container up uh, don't rush around um, and actually you're you're at your happiest when you're not doing anything <laughs> which is quite quite a unique a unique thing to experience um, especially as from a very young age doing sport I fill my weekends I've been traveling here there and everywhere and I would not change any of that but actually as I'm getting older you look at what's important to me um, and what what makes me and my family happiest uh, the next 18 months I'm feeling cautiously optimistic uh, I think it's safe to say uh, we're at a really exciting time now with the charity returning to a sense of normality. Uh, I've, I've built up this time to, to learn more about myself. Um, so there's so much on the horizon and it's knowing that uh, I may need to spend that quality time with everyone around me and, and have that perspective. And I don't think I would have had that perspective if I hadn't experienced the, the ups and downs and the turbulence of 2020 and 2021 <laughs> um, and I just hope that uh, rules and regulations um, people are given plenty of warning um, obviously if it has to be the case of social, more social distance of being implemented again then we have to follow that we have to follow the experts advice but I think it's the constant changing and the sudden changes that just isn't fair on anyone and and I've seen I've seen how that's impacted people's mental health from so many different reasons. Um, I think everyone's true colours came out in so many different ways this year. So, uh, yeah, I'm just excited for normality to resume. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>